Hello and welcome to a continuation of our previous lesson on the sewing machine. In this video, we'll look at how to prepare the sewing machine for straight stitching. We'll look at how to wind a bobbin, how to insert a bobbin in a bobbin case, how to place a bobbin case into the sewing machine shuttle, and how to insert or remove a needle. We'll also look at the top threading of the machine, and lastly, We'll test the machine to ensure that stitches and tension are just right. You'll need a sewing machine to practice along as we continue with the lesson. You'll also need a pair of fabric scissors. Uh, you'll also need tailor's chalk and fabric for testing. Let's begin with the winding of a bobbin. The first thing you do when you're winding the bobbin is to make sure the needle is not moving. So you stop its motion by loosening the stop motion screw that is on the side of the wheel. When you loosen it, you will notice that when you turn the handle of the wheel, the needle bed and the needle itself does not move anymore. That way you protect the needle from breaking. Put the thread into the spool pin and then you pass it into the thread guide that guides the thread into the bobbin winder. Take your bobbin. The bobbin has a slot section which is supposed to clip into a clip that is on the bobbin winder as you can see it there. The two should clip into each other. Insert the bobbin into the bobbin winder and then you take your thread and wind it around the bobbin a bit in the direction that the bobbin will be moving when winding. Close the bobbin winder and then press the bobbin winder downwards and then turn the wheel and you'll notice that the bobbin is moving as you turn the wheel. Now as far as the speed is concerned, the faster you turn the wheel, the quicker you wind the bobbin, the slower you do it, the slower it is. Different machines have a different way of winding the bobbin. Treadle machines require you to treadle from the feet and so on and so forth. So for in this case, we're not going to feel the bobbin to the full but you're advised to wind the bobbin to full so that you don't keep on winding it when you start stitching. So after winding the bobbin you cut the thread and then you lift the bobbin winder clip and remove your bobbin. You'll notice that the bobbin is wound ready to use. This is how you insert a bobbin into a bobbin case. You hold the bobbin case on one hand and the bobbin on the other hand. Ensure that the bobbin is wound with thread. You insert it into the hollow part of the bobbin case and then ensure that the thread passes through two metallic parts. The top part of the bobbin case, we call it the spring and it's somewhere near something that looks like a screw. And then the thread comes out through the slot as you can see here. It should flow smoothly. The combined bobbin and bobbin case are supposed to be inserted in the shuttle. Now the shuttle is under the slide plate. So you open the slide plate and right inside there is where you're going to insert the bobbin and bobbin case. When inserting the bobbin case into the shuttle, you hold the lever part of the bobbin case and then you insert it into the shuttle in such a way that the hooked part of the bobbin goes into the slot of the shuttle, just as you can see it there. And then you leave the hanging lower thread to be picked later. This is how we insert the needle. You lower the presser foot using the presser foot lifter, as you can see here. For this particular machine, we use a universal needle that has a head that is flat on one side. As you can see, the flat side is here. The flat side is supposed to lie against the needle bed slot. So when you move the wheel, you'll notice that the slot is where the needle flat side lies against. So you insert the needle into the needle bed and then you ensure it goes all the way up to the end of that slot. Then in that position, you tighten the needle clamp and make sure it's tight enough. Then you will notice that the needle eye is in such a way that you should be able to thread the needle from left to right. You move the wheel to ensure the needle is not hitting on anything. Now, when you want to remove the needle from the machine, this is what you do. You lift the needle bed by moving the wheel 
and then you hold the needle with one hand and the clamp on the other, you loosen the needle clamp, and when it's loose enough, you remove the needle. This is how to thread the upper part of the sewing machine. You put the thread in the spool pin, then the first thread guide, and the thread goes down to the tension disc between the two discs, and then the thread goes up to the take-up lever. After going through the take-up lever, it goes to the second thread guide, the third thread guide, and the needle. We'll do it practically. Put the thread in the spool pin, then thread it through the first thread guide, and then you pass the thread between the two discs in the tension discs, and you ensure that the thread fits correctly within the two discs. Pull it through and thread the take-up lever I from that direction, from the back to the front, as you can see here. So thread it correctly. And then after threading, you pull the thread carefully, making sure it doesn't entangle. And the thread then goes to the second thread guide, which is a hook that you just slip the thread underneath. And then to the third thread guide, which is also a hook that you also pass a thread underneath. And then you thread the needle eye from the left to the right. Make sure you thread it without entangling the thread as this can make the thread break when you're stitching. So you thread it from the left to the right, as you can see here. After threading the needle, you pull the thread. And if you want to lift up the lower thread from the machine, holding that top thread, you turn the wheel and then it will lift the bottom thread, which forms a loop. After threading the machine, we need to test whether the stitches are right and the tension is right. To do that, we need a piece of fabric and we are going to cut it out from what you're seeing here. We need a tape measure to measure and then we need a tailor's chalk and a pair of scissors for that particular purpose. So you use a tape measure to first come up with the first side of the piece that we're going to use, that is five inches. So you mark on the fabric. Uh, the starting point of the 5 inches and the ending point of the 5 inches. Then using the same measurements, you measure on the opposite direction and then you draw a line to join the two points. So if you notice, we are trying to come up with a piece of fabric that takes the shape of a square. Still use the 5 inches to measure the other direction of the piece and draw a line to join the points. And then you also join the previous first point and the one that you measured last and draw a line. Complete it above by doing the same, whereby you draw a line to complete the square, as you can see here. So there we have our measured piece of fabric. We take our scissors and then we cut it out so that we can use it to test whether our machine is in correct um, tension or it has the right stitches. Now what you need to note is that if the tension is not right, there are certain faults that the machine develops and we are going to see that. And so after you have cut out your piece of fabric, put aside the remaining fabric and then there you have your pieces of fabric that you're going to use to test your machine. Now next is we pick one of the pieces of fabric if we want to do straight stitching while we are testing, it's still okay. You draw lines that will guide you when you're stitching. But otherwise, for me, you'll notice at some point, I will not be stitching along the lines. I'll just be approximating the straight stitching since it's for testing purpose. In the next video, we are going to see how to do basic straight stitching. So at this point, it shouldn't worry you. So there we have the lines. So you take the piece of fabric, you place it between the presser foot and the feed dog. You turn the top thread backwards and then you lower the presser foot using the presser foot lifter and you turn the wheel. When you turn the wheel, it's going to stitch, guide the fabric so that the needle moves along the line that you have drawn on the piece of fabric. As you can see here, how fast you stitch is how fast you move the wheel. If you move it too slowly, you stitch slowly. Now to remove the piece of fabric, you've got to lift the presser foot again, and then you turn the wheel several times until you release the top end 
bottom threads, then you cut with a pair of scissors. There we have our stitches, they look even, both at the face and at the back of the fabric, and therefore that means the tension is right. However, what happens if the tension is tampered with? First, pull out the top and bottom threads, make sure they are long enough so that when we start stitching, it doesn't get off the needle. So let's loosen the tension and see if it has any effect on the second line of stitching. So now we are stitching with the tension a bit loosened. Let's see what effect it has after stitching. You'll notice that when the top thread is loose, something happens to the bottom thread in terms of the tension. So this is what happens. When the top thread is loose or the tension is loose, you'll find that at the bottom, the thread will appear tight and it will form loops, as you can see here. So the bottom thread is too tight and the top thread is too loose. Therefore, we get bottom loops. That is an indication that the tension is not right. Mostly, we do not tamper with the bottom tension. When we have to regulate the tension, we try our best to do it from the tension disc. Otherwise, the bottom thread tension is mostly not an issue if you have regulated the top tension. So I'm going to try again, having changed the tension again to see what happens. I made it a bit tight. And you'll notice when the tension disc is too tight, the fabric seems to fold or pucker, as you can see here. So it kind of forms, kind of like gathers because the top tension is too tight. Again, you need to regulate the tension if the tension disc is too tight because the fabric will pucker or fold, as you can see here. On the underside, there will still be the issue of loops because the tension is not right. So that still is an indicator that you need to work on the tension. So what we are going to do next is to try and regulate the tension as well as choose different stitch sizes to see how the different stitch sizes look like. So you lower your presser foot, regulate the tension to make sure it's not too tight and not too loose, and then choose the stitch size. In my case, I'll move the stitch bar up so that it's at stitch size number eight. Let's see, it's neither too small nor too big. So we'll notice the size of the stitches based on what we have chosen, which is between eight and 12. So after stitching, you will notice that these stitches are not too small and they are not too big. They are kind of just average or moderate and they could be stitches that you can use for normal stitching, right? And you notice the tension is okay on the underside and even on the top side because I had turned the tension disc to the right tension. How about if we choose a different size of stitches? In this case, if you want to make very tiny stitches, and I also tamper with the tension a little bit to see what happens. So in this particular case, I'm going to choose very tiny stitches by turning the stitch bar in such a way that it goes up a bit above eight and above 12. So the machine kind of moves a bit slower because the stitches are too small and there are many within an inch. And therefore you'll notice you take more time and more energy to stitch a small section since you're using very tiny stitches. Remember I tampered with the tension. So you're going to notice there's something that will happen after stitching either there will be loops or at the underside. So let's see what happens after you do that. The top side shows tinier stitches. And then when you look at the underside, the underside kind of shows like the tension is it very right, though it's a bit uh, tight. We're also going to try the same using big stitches. So to get big stitches, we move the stitch bar to the bottom so that the stitch bar moves right to the bottom where the smallest number is, that is number seven or thereabout. 
you'll notice the stitches that are made when we stitch at this point are quite big compared to the other two that we have stitched and it takes you quicker to stitch bigger size stitches than smaller ones. So after stitching, we will notice that if the tension is right, the top stitches will look neat if the tension is right and it should look neat also on the underside. Otherwise, if there's something wrong with the tension, still the bottom thread will look pulled and not exactly straight. So you can keep practicing until you get the right tension. You have to keep adjusting the tension disc, changing the stitch size to ensure that what you achieve at the end of it all will just be right. So let's see the last stitching and we see what happens after adjusting the tension just a little bit. It takes practice to know how to regulate the tension so that you stitch with the correct size of stitches both at the top and at the bottom with the threads not being too tight. So at the top it looks okay and on the underside it still looks there's a problem with the tension. So you keep doing this until you get the right tension. You also need to look at the tension disc has numbers which guide you on where exactly you should place the particular tension in comparison to the lower thread. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel to see more content like this. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss a new video. Sharing is caring. If you found this video helpful or entertaining, please share it with your friends and family. It helps us reach more learners and teachers. Lastly, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below to let us know your thoughts. Your support means the world to us and it helps us create more great content. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.